Very good. How are you now? Okay, live content, we'll get on the way. We'll jump in there. Keen, I suppose, first question, what position are you going to play this week? Jesus, I don't know. I just take any position I'm given. Um, yeah, just happy to be involved. I saw you speaking after the game, but Ty, I might just ask you, as another front row player, like I mean, you can obviously appreciate the the shift that Keane would have had to put in in the second half yesterday, switching across to to Hooper. Can you talk us through almost even the the technical things of uh, differences between what Keane would have been doing or what you would be doing on tight head if you ever had to win it? Keane's probably the best place to answer because he's covered all three at this stage. Um, yeah, I think I think a hooker and a tie head are not relatively simple or similar, but <clears throat> more similar t to from a loose head to tie head in terms of you know chest position, head position, and etc. The way you kind of balance weight on both shoulders. Uh, <clears throat> I think the thing Church's done unbelievably well is transition from loose head to tie head, then to hooker, and and pick up all three so quickly and um, I suppose a testament to Churchy here beside me because it's not easy to do and you can swamp yourself with overthinking where the man just went for it and um, did so well you know. And Keane I know you've often been listed down as the you know potential tight end who's the hooker option on team sheets and things like that and you played there at school but how much would you kind of fill in at training and things like that down the years just getting a few reps here and there? Uh, I think the last time I hit a scrum was about 2008. <laughs> um, I've done a couple of setups here and there, yeah. Um, but to go to go live and stuff, it's been a while, yeah. But front row is front row, in my opinion. You know, there's 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 technicalities, yeah, that you can iron out and all. But at the end of the day, you just got to hit and push and strike. <laughs> but uh, was that the mindset when you were going in on? Sunday. Yeah, like I went, I went into the middle of two of the best props in the world, so I'm in a relatively good starting place there. Like so, uh, so you know, just give it a lash, have a shot, uh, nothing to lose. Like I said, you know, uh, I don't mind if if someone lifted me up out of the middle of the scrum, I, I can take that, but. We uh, we ended up with fifteen men on the field when we when we could have been with fourteen, and that's that's kind of greater cause stuff. So it's fine. And just take my final question for you: You got back out on the pitch on Sunday in sixty-five minutes, pretty solid shift, a pretty solid day's work. How was the the body and how were the the lungs after the game? Not good, good. Uh, I thought I could have pushed minutes out if I, if I had to. Obviously, um, Tommy came on, but I felt good. Can you talk about the, the occasion on Saturday morning just the match had his weekend, Ireland's Grand Slam on the line against England. You played some big games, but this must be the biggest game of your career, is it? Well, I played a Grand Slam game in 2018 as well. Um, yeah, look, it's massive. And I think the occasion obviously adds to it from a player's perspective or the dressing room, there's a bounce about it. Um, <clears throat> probably all it's all carrot no stick for us if that makes sense but I suppose it's it's on us to play the game not the occasion at the same time and um, I think that's probably at the forefront of our mind Keane what about England getting such a hammer at the weekend is that something you could have done without? Uh, done without I don't know <laughs> um, it's you expect a bounce back uh, England rugby is is very strong historically. Um, in our area, they have a very strong pack. That's we're not going to like look at that game and go, oh, that's going to happen for us." That would that would be that would be silly of us. Um, we we'll, we we'll treat them with the historical respect we treat that pack with because because they're bloody dangerous and they've got very good players and they've got top end weight in the pack. So um, you know we'll. We'll review this all properly, and you know, you don't just look at a team's last game when you're prepping for it. You look at their season. You look at their their players and their club games. You you go you go through everything. So uh, there's a lot to pick apart, and 
you know, we'll do that, but at the same time, there's going to be a lot of focus on ourselves and, and where we can draw more from ourselves in particular areas of the game. Uh, lads, you both played in 2018, so you played in Grand Slam Finals before. How do you prepare this week? Is it, do you treat it as another game, or do you embrace it and say, no, this is a massive game, and we're going to enjoy the build up to it and the excitement and everything that comes with it? A um, little bit of both. A little bit of both, and I suppose look, it's all on the line. And um, you know, like, if if you're not excited about playing this weekend, like why are you playing the sport, or what you, what are you doing, what we're we slog away and work so hard at all year, you know what I mean? And um, I think the group is very excited, um, you know, and, and everyone's different within that. Like some people love going out there and showing how good they are. There's other people that maybe find themselves to get small on that attention and our pressure and I think we have a very good balance in the squad where we can talk about that to get the most out of each other so um, it's about enjoying the week enjoying the build up but also doing the work How much confidence do you derive from all the adversity that happened losing players and decisions that might have gone your way and still coming through and winning well against Scotland That's the game though isn't it It's the game yeah it happened Great if it didn't happen, but you learn about yourself and something we've talked about now for years, really, to be honest with you. Um, and you can't really plan for it, it just happens and you just got to deal and get on. What did you learn yourself about yourself? When? When everything goes against you and you still perform, what did you learn about your team? Just keep pushing hard. Um, no, just the lads are calm. You know what I mean? How do we get through this? Yeah, this is the plan. Okay. Don't blink an eye and just trust. Just, just trust the lads. Grand Slams are obviously very special, but how much more special would it be to do it in front of your family, your friends, maybe players you, you grew up playing alongside, to both of you? I mean, I'm sure you're sick of talking about it, but can you just kind of capture what would it mean to do it in Dublin and have everyone close to you there? I think you take that apart in a few separate areas. Like, there's play for Ireland in Dublin with family and friends there that you will see after that they'll see you show them what it means that's that's got its own magnitude and I think that's what drives everyone to reach a standard that we're shooting for at the end of that if we've done all of that we get a great prize and we get an unbelievable celebration but for us to do justice to to everything that we train for and to play in front of family and friends on our home patch on the weekend that it is, I think that's that's such a huge drive for us. We will accept we accept what the end of it is and you might have a grand slam and a championship, but you park that bit and it's about performance and preparation for performance and to know that your family have seen you show what this means to you and what it means to each other as a group. Um, yeah, um, like it means a lot. You just, I suppose you just want people, and I, I don't really like overly talking about it here because we've won nothing yet, you know what I mean? I think that's <coughs> the danger of, or dangerous of complacency and <coughs> I suppose we talk about, we understand it but from the wider public as well, you know, um, but it's just to show people or you hope that, you know, us wearing a green jersey and, and, and playing well, <coughs> that people can be proud to be Irish and can, uh, can associate with us. And I understand that everyone's not rugby people and that's fine and maybe not your rugby, uh, rugby's not your cup of tea, but I hope that they can see through our actions that it means something to us, it means something to play for Ireland, no matter if you're, I don't know, within the island of Ireland or you're an Irish living abroad or whatever, um, just to see that you know, it means something to us and hopefully they can be proud of us. You've both been around the squad for a number of years and early in the tournament, I think Paul Connell and I think Brian Driscoll has talked about this and some of the former players have said that in the past, if Ireland went into a tournament maybe as the number one team in the world, big tier to the tournament, there would have been a degree of embarrassment there playing it down. There seems to be a switch in mentality where a lot of the other players have nothing but success. Have you guys noticed that it's now something that the younger players just embrace? They recognise that they're 
relish rather than maybe in the past Aaron and things would have shied away from? I think people are different. The younger people come through the sport now or as a culture, not, not as a culture, but you know, as just as people are a little bit different than uh, definitely when church came through, but um, <laughs> certainly when I came through too. Time. Yeah. Um, so they have that little bit more self confidence about them. Um, but it's not like number one in the world or no, not number one in the world. It doesn't really factor into our heads a whole lot. Every time you go out to the pitch, you have to prove something. We've worked very hard, and every time we take the pitch, we have to, to not only protect that, but try to, to keep growing as well. And Tommy, does playing England in particular allow you to get an extra edge to it all? Edge occasion, you know, it's always... No matter you, when you play England, England... Um, and some of the teams in November, there's an extra special, I always think, I'm not sure how you feel, but a buzz around the stadium. I think that's just the way of it, and it definitely adds to the occasion. And just with friends and family that are already mentioned, what's it like to get tickets and to get every in in there? Is there? Is your phone hopping with messages and calls trying to get there, or what's that side of things like? At this stage of my career, the people who get them know they're going to get them. Mm -hmm. uh, a few stray texts, this is just being no sorry. It's uh, they'll know from weeks out that they're in line, and it all depends on selection. And if that's the case, then my ones that always come, always come. Mm -hmm. What's like you take? Yeah, similar. Um, I suppose we're um, I have a certain amount of tickets, and that's it. And um, usual people kind of get tickets, family, etc. And as a supporter, I know you spoke about before, that sometimes coming in on the bus, you're looking out at the fans, wishing you're out there, that it's such an exciting day. This is probably one of those days that's going to be a big one for supporters. Yeah, huge. And it's the occasion. It's, you know, it's a big thing. It's a big deal. And, and I have to say, they've been incredible. I've, I, you know, I, there's a real... Well, I feel there's a marked difference in the supporters. Edinburgh the weekend was unbelievable. I know maybe it was Sunday game, so a lot of people were over Saturday, but they had a captain's run. It was just jammers getting onto the bus. and You, know, you can feel that, and, and players feed off that. You know what I mean? And There definitely is that wave and um, that they bring. And, you know, I, I expect it to be class the weekend. Yeah, I just want to ask you about Johnny Sexton. Um, he's most likely to become Ireland's record for points scorer uh, point this weekend. Uh, how good is he, and, and where does he rank in the, the list of the all-time greats in Irish rugby? Um, he's himself, isn't he? Like he's, he, Johnny has his own standards, and all of us strive to get to those standards, and we get it absolutely torn into when we don't, but we try. Uh, Johnny's standard is so high and it has been for so long that it just drives something special in him and you know he deserves all the accolades he gets because he's a fierce competitor, an unbelievable professional, his, his whole life revolves around rugby, his family support him incredibly well to be the player and person he is but I think he's very aware that team success is the most important thing and that's the most important thing to him um, to, he could take the points tally and um, someone down the line will take it off him but if, if he takes a victory the weekend no one will ever take it off him and it's, it's something that belongs to him in a special group that's the sort of thing that's going to drive Johnny and, you know, he, he lives for that successful feeling after a game. The, the Johnny you see after a game is, is the most enjoyable Johnny to be around. It's, it's a f different person. It's class. So, uh, you know, if anything's going to make me play better, it's to, to get to meet that Johnny for a while. Okay, guys, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Ta very much.